Hi, this is Graham from Genom's Astro. In this video, we're going to look at an accessory from Celestron. It's the 9x50 right angled correct image finder scope, and this one is designed for use with Smith Cassegrain telescopes like the C8. So it's Celestron model 93781, and it's currently for sale in the UK for around £140. We'll see what's in the box, see how easy it is to set up, and then have a look at how it works. So once you remove the packaging, you'll find two things in the box. The finder scope itself and one of these. So if we start with a small piece, this is an illuminated reticule. So basically this finder scope, so it's a nine by 50, so it's magnification nine times using a 50 millimeter lens. But the idea is that this finder scope will allow you to look at the night sky with a superimposed reticule, so a cross, and that, reticule can be illuminated at night using this little unit. So hopefully you can see it there. It's got a rotary control on this end, which is just an on and an off. And if I point the unit towards the camera, you can see there is a red LED. And as I turn the rotary control, the level of illumination goes up or down. So that is the first part of what you get inside the box. I'll put that to one side. Uh, so this is the main finder scope itself. And the first thing I guess you'd note when you get it out of the box is that it's quite a heavy unit. Um, I've, I've weighed this and it weighs around 800 grams. So I don't know, how much is that? Well, just by comparison, on my C8 here, I'm taking off the original finder, a six by 30 straight through finder. And hopefully the new unit is going to mount on the same place on the optical tube. This unit, a 6x30, um, weighs 150 grams, whereas this one weighs a much more substantial 800 grams. So that's the first thing to note, this is not a light unit. Okay, so if we take off the dust caps, you can see uh, there's the 50 millimeter objective lens. Round the eyepiece end, what can we see? Well, we've got an eyepiece, so you'd see the reticule if you look look into it. This is a focusable eyepiece, which we'll see is quite, quite a useful feature. It is a right angle. So basically this will present a view of the night sky that is the right way up. It's comfortable in that it's a 90 degree bend of the light path, so you can look at objects high in the sky without hurting your neck. So it is going to be, they're going to be the right way up and they're also going to have the correct left to right orientation. So if you were looking up at say the moon with your naked eye and then you looked through the eyepiece of the finder scope at the moon, everything would be the same, just magnified by nine. Okay, so that's what the unit does. So it's a focusable unit, has a reticule across. Um, there seem to be an awful lot of screws. Now, if you look online, the first thing people say about this is you get it out of the box, you're searching around for the instructions. No, there are no instructions. There's not even the really basic get started instructions. So you end up sort of scrabbling around to work out how to how to connect and use this um, unit. It's actually quite simple. And the, straight away, the first thing to notice that it is the finder scope itself. And it's also an attachment bracket. So this unit at the bottom is the bracket that is going to attach to the optical tube. And if we take these first, these two screws here, loosen those off, we'll see, if I loosen them completely, that we can remove the finder from the bracket. So here's the bracket. Now the idea here is that you can attach the bracket to your scope and then once you put the finder on, you're ready to go. But if you want to transport the optical tube in a carrying case, quite often there isn't space for to accommodate a quite a bulky finder on the side of the tube. So if you want, you can take off the, uh, the finder itself from the bracket and then transport it home or out to your night sky location. Slide it on and if you've lined everything up properly in the first place, it should still maintain that alignment when you uh, 
when you when you set it up again. We'll see whether it actually works in practice. But the first thing to point is there's two parts in the unit. This is the bracket. Now, if we look, I try and show you on my C8. On the top of the optical tube, the original finder was mounted here and it was just attached with a couple of screws. This unit, this uh, bracket reuses that same mounting point. So what you do essentially is you take the two screws out that you had before. This, this, uh, this finder does not come with screws so hopefully you've got some in your optical tube and you basically you will screw the bracket to the side of the tube like so. Okay, so now I have attached the bracket to the side of the tube. Here are the two screws. It's tightened down nicely, and you can see that there is a little bit of side-to-side -side, uh, adjustment that is available by the way that the, uh, the screws are mounted. So, okay, so far so good. You can see now, hopefully, if you look at the side profile of this bracket, there are a couple of little indentations on this side here and here. Now the idea is going to be that once you slide the actual finder on, the, the two attachment screws are going to just locate down onto that. But uh, easier to see than to explain. So if I take the finder scope and you slide it on from above and I'll let go of it at that point. So hopefully you can see there that the finder locates onto the bracket quite easily. After which all you do is tighten the two screws and then the whole unit is quite rigidly attached to the side of the optical tube. Nothing's really going to move there as long as you've tightened down the original bracket sufficiently onto the, uh, the end of the optical tube. So what's next? Well, we've got this reticle unit, which we saw before, which we need to attach to the finder scope. You'll see before we do that, that there is a recessed uh, hex Allen key here, which, which is supplied actually with the, with the finder scope. That allows you to split the reticule into two to change the batteries. Although, of course, there are no instructions, so you'd have to work that out for yourself if you weren't watching the video. Um, but once you've got over that, Checking it's still working. It's a simple job of screwing the illuminated reticule into the side of the eyepiece on the finder scope. And you'll have to take my word for it, but if you look into the finder scope at this point, when it's turned on, you'll see a cross. In fact, it's two pairs of vertical lines intersected by two pairs of horizontal lines forming a cross and as I mentioned, you can adjust the focus of the image using this focusing ring, which is really quite a smooth, quite a nice feature. Right, what is left? Well, all of the screws. I think the thing that gets people confused when they first get one of these units out of the box is why are there so many screws? Well, we, we'll go around them and just make sure we cover them all off. So we've already looked at these two here. These are simply to tension down the finder scope on its bracket onto the attachment bracket. So once you've attached it, those are screwed down, no problem, we've dealt with those. And if we work from the back of the finder scope, from where we can see the diagonal here, uh, you can see at the back there are two screws here. So if I undo those one at a time, it allows me to remove and you can see actually, you can just see the, the, the red LED illumination from the reticle there. Um, it allows me to remove the whole of the eyepiece and illuminator unit. Why would I want to do that? Well, maybe I want to clean the inside optical surfaces, but to be honest, I don't think it's a particularly useful feature. Perhaps someone can tell me if they've got a, uh, a reason why that is useful. But of course it does allow you also to rotate the orientation of the reticule with respect to the to the eyepiece body and the, so perhaps that's the use. So we tighten those two back down nice and tight and then if I rotate the tube a little bit more 
we can see hopefully, and I move the camera a tiny bit, there are two more screws here. These ones allow you to rotate the orientation of the eyepiece and its associated diagonal round as so. Now that is particularly useful as you, if you've used a, a finoscope at night, you'll notice that they're remarkably good at poking themselves into your eye. So this is actually quite a nice feature and it allows you to, to rotate the angle at which the you're looking, if you like, down into the finoscope, equally to, to both to make it comfortable for viewing, and also so that it doesn't uh, doesn't clunk you on the on the side of the head. So that's what these two are for, and you will use those quite a bit uh, during observing, potentially if you're uh, if you're dealing with lots of objects, looking at objects at lots of different orientations in the night sky. So okay, so we've dealt with these two, these two started with those two so that leaves three more screws to deal with so there's one here one here and one hiding down here this one is actually not a screw as such it is a sprung loaded pin and the idea i guess might be obvious by this point is the idea of these screws if i rotate the tube and step out a little bit so we get a bit of a clearer view the idea of these three mounting points, let's say, is that they are features that exist on all finder scopes. They are used to allow us to line up the optical axis, that's this line here, of the finder scope with that of the telescope. Why do we want to do that? Well, if you want to use the finder scope first to find an object in the night sky at low power, that is to say at nine times, and then hope that it will be in the eyepiece of the telescope itself, which is gonna be operating at a higher power, it's only gonna work if the two telescopes, which is what effectively what these are, that is the finder scope and the main telescope itself are optically lined up. They're pointing in the same direction. So that's all these uh, remaining screws are doing. So they're allowing you to adjust just by tensioning one screw and loosening another. They're allowing you to adjust the position of the finder scope tube within this cradle. So the front end is fixed and you're just slightly moving the angle of the finder scope using these two attachments. So you, you loosen one and you tighten the other, loosen one and you tighten the other. And like a lot of optical stuff, when you first got some equipment on your telescope, set this up during the day. So do what I'm doing now, put the scope um, in a position where you can focus the main scope itself and the finer scope on a distant object. Point the telescope at, a, a, at an object, I know, a, a pole, a building, a chimney, and then adjust these two screws until you've got that same object in the middle of the reticule of the finer scope. Then tighten everything down, check it's all still aligned, and that's it, everything is done. So even if you then detach the rack finder put it in a different box when you take the scope to a, an observing site and just slide it back on as we've seen, the optical alignment of the finder and the telescope itself should be maintained. So that's basically it. So there are no more features. We have covered all of the screws. We've covered the illuminated reticule. Um, optically, I would say it's a pretty good unit actually. Uh, it's a 50 millimeter light grass, so it's much more useful than the original sort of 30 millimeter or smaller finder scopes, which really aren't much good in my opinion. And being a right angle unit, it's far more comfortable to use than uh, a straight through finder scope. So I would say that this unit, you can fit it to a lot of C8 scopes. They have standard mounting uh, screws around the back here. I'd say that this is it's a nice unit, it's, it's not cheap. You can get them used in, in good condition uh, fairly easily because some scopes are sold with this as part of a package and some people don't use them. In the world, in the modern world, we've got star sense and auto location of um, auto alignment, then some people don't use the finder at all. So you might find that someone has taken this uh, unit off or never in fact fitted it from, from new 
and they want to sell it for make, make a few pounds. So they are available used, or if not in the UK, 140 pounds, quite a lot of money, but then a very useful feature, probably one of the main things you can add to a scope. If you want to do star hopping and find things visually without go to, I'd say that a, a right angle finder scope with a good diameter objective like this is one of the most useful um, places to put your money. Okay, so I hope it's been useful. Uh, this is the, just to remind, the model 93781 from Celestron, I think is a good bit of kit. Okay, thanks for watching.